Step 2. Locate an opponent to play with, such as a friend or family member. I think I can finally say that I have officially found the worst Yu-Gi-Oh! guide on the entire internet. You thought that off-brand 2003 DVD with the two kids playing was bad? <laughs> think again. This Yu-Gi-Oh! guide comes to us from a YouTube channel called Howcast. Through leading experts and accurate, reliable information. Some of their most popular tutorials include such topics as how to kiss with passion, how to kiss harder, how to kiss dirty, and how to be the best kisser. With recent videos such as how to properly take a bath, which when I think about it might actually be more valuable to Yu-Gi-Oh! players. Anyways, the video I watched was how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, this video was uploaded 12 years ago, but you know, I just want to get some of the fundamentals. I just learned what Yu-Gi-Oh! was last week and I'm just trying to figure out how to play. I should point out though, this video has 1.5 million views, so there are definitely more than a few people watching this and taking it seriously. And to those people, I am very sorry. How to play Yu-Gi-Oh! If you dream of entering the exciting world of Yu-Gi-Oh!, these tips will have you playing like a pro in no time. All right, so 10 seconds in and they've already promised that I'm gonna be playing like a pro Yu-Gi-Oh! player. Now, obviously that's always been my dream. I mean, I would love to be a professional Yu-Gi-Oh! player. That said, I'm a little bit concerned about how they're gonna be able to teach me to be a pro Yu-Gi-Oh! player in what is literally a minute and a half long tutorial, but you know what, it's fine. Let's give them a benefit of the doubt. We'll keep watching. You will need a Yu-Gi-Oh! starter deck. An opponent with a deck? Okay, first of all, I'll have you know that an opponent is actually optional. As a kid, I would oftentimes play alone in my room and I would use both of them. Some of you guys did it too, don't lie. I promise I have friends now. Also kind of interesting that they mentioned that you'll need a Yu-Gi-Oh! starter deck and yet they don't actually tell you what deck that is or show anything on screen at all. I mean, granted, maybe they figured that like depending on when someone watches this video, the type of starter deck to buy would like sort of change, but they could at least like show a starter deck Yugi, I don't know. An official game mat and a coin. Okay, really quick question. Does anybody actually still use coins for like anything in Yu-Gi-Oh anymore? I mean, I feel like we always just roll dice to see who goes first. And even with like coin flip effects, which barely really come up today, people will roll dice and just be like, even as heads, odds, tails. Okay, sorry, I'm nitpicking. Optional Yu-Gi-Oh booster packs, additional players, and an official rule book. Wait, why do I need an official rulebook? I thought this minute and a half long tutorial was gonna teach me how to be a professional Yu-Gi-Oh player. Also kind of unrelated, but I actually have kept many of the official rulebooks that I had as a kid and just picked some up as well as an adult just because they're really nostalgic and I like them. And I also would read them when I was alone and like just got a new Yu-Gi-Oh product and next have anybody to play against. It was just a fun thing, like reading the rulebook. Even though the early ones all looked the same, they would actually have different version numbers on them. Like this is version 5.0 and this is version 6.0. I think I actually have a 1.0 somewhere, but it might be like at my old house. Step one, study each card and become familiar with every monster, spell, and trap in your deck. All right, so I know we're probably gonna all end up roasting this video, but I have to say, this isn't the worst advice. I mean, most Yu-Gi-Oh players don't read their cards at all, and just reading your own cards and kind of being familiar with them is very good practice. More players could afford to do it, so uh, good on them. Although the kid acting in his video seems like he could kind of care less or like he just can't read the cards at all, but maybe that's just how he looks. Collect booster packs to custom create your own unique deck and tailor it for each duel. The key to a good deck is diversity and balance. I think I get what they're saying, but also like not at all. Like what does that really mean? Does that mean that just having like one monster of every single type in my deck is like, diverse and balanced or do they mean like a certain number of monsters spells and trap cards as a kid that's actually how i kind of rationalized it i was like oh, okay a proper deck should be like 20 monsters 10 spells 10 traps i'm sure some of you guys did it too it would just be great if they actually you know provided some example of what proper deck building looks like or some sort of a ratio or literally anything beyond vague words that just sound like someone who doesn't play this game at all wrote this whole script step two locate an opponent to play with such as a friend or family member what are these expressions these kids are making? Like, is that how you challenge somebody to a duel? You just sort of like treat it like a Pokemon battle? I challenge you to a duel. I accept. If you look really closely, you can actually notice that the second guy like kind of briefly breaks character and looks at the camera right before they pause it. I record a lot of skits, just I, I notice these sorts of things. While you only need two people to play, teams of several players can make each duel more challenging and fun. 
So this actually like is not the worst tip in the world, just making groups of players and kind of like breaking up into teams can sort of make it feel more like a anime-like tournament. At least that's what I did when I was a kid. I don't know how you would necessarily do that as an adult, but there are Yu-Gi-Oh! like sponsored teams and stuff in the real world today, so. Step three, shuffle and cut each deck and place them face down on the game mat. These are really terrible examples of how to shuffle your cards, but I will give them this. At least they're not doing the annoying like bridge shuffle or whatever it's called. Oh God, I can't stand that. I've actually seen that used in tutorial videos. So they get a point for not doing that. Really be nice if these kids would use some sleeves though. Step four, flip a coin to decide play order. The winner can choose to either receive or challenge. Has anyone ever heard it described that way? I won the coin flip. I will choose to receive. Step five. Draw your first five cards and begin the duel by placing the cards face up. Wait a second, that one kid just suddenly has sleeves and the other kid doesn't have sleeves? Like literally one shot before they're just both using like unsleeved old cards and then the next shot the guy's got sleeves on his... Okay. And begin the duel by placing the cards face up and deciding a winner based on the card's information. Okay, this is the part that I understand the least about this entire video. You just start by placing all the cards face up and deciding a winner based on what's on the cards. Like in a holistic way, I think that what they're saying is you just duel, but also like, what? I win. You know, in a way, that's not that much different than modern Yu-Gi-Oh, though, is it? I mean, I guess it has that sort of playground Yu-Gi-Oh element to it, where, like, a lot of times we would just take vanilla monsters and sort of, like, look at the picture and assume that, oh, well, this flying monster could dodge your earth-based attack, or this water monster puts out your fire, so I win. But also that would mean that you're just, like, placing trap cards face up on the field just kind of regardless, so I, eh? Since the number of possible play combinations can number into the thousands, an official rule book may be needed for beginners. So here they go once again lying to me, saying they're gonna teach me how to be a professional Yu-Gi-Oh player with this one minute and a half long video, and then they tell me, nah, you probably need to use a rule book. Granted they're right, the amount of interactions in this game can number in the thousands, or probably like 10, hundreds of thousands at this point? I mean, I don't know, this game's really freaking confusing. But still, it's like, is this supposed to be a guide of how to play Yu-Gi-Oh or a guide of how to learn how to play Yu-Gi-Oh? Step six. Determine the winner by scoring backwards from 8,000 for each player. This is another one of those parts of this video that I just don't understand the wording of. Scoring backwards from 8,000. They couldn't just say that you have 8,000 life points. Not to mention, they don't even tell you how life points work. They just have these two arbitrary numbers on the screen above each player just going down randomly. 7,999. 7,998. 7,997. 7,996? 7,995. They couldn't bother to at least just say like, oh, if you attack with a monster, then you subtract the attack points from the attacking monster and the defending monster, and that's how many life points you lose. They literally just say, no, just score backwards from 8,000. Does that mean that I just get to decide how many life points someone like loses just randomly? Like, oh, well, you lost this turn, so you lose 700 life points. The loser is the first to reach zero points or run out of cards. Jeez, that dude was so salty when he lost. Did you know? The comic book Yu-Gi-Oh! began as a regular feature in the magazine Shonen Jump in 1996. Um, okay. Why did they put that random bit of information there just at the very end of the video? Like, did you know Yu-Gi-Oh! was published in 1996? Okay, that's your fun fact for the day. Subscribe, bye. So yeah, this video was completely useless. I don't even know why they made it. But yeah, I didn't really learn a thing. It's kind of funny, people in the comments like 100% agree that this video was complete doo doo diarrhea. I learn more from watching two episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, so I need cards and an opponent to play Yu-Gi-Oh. The only thing this video forgot to teach us was how to summon monsters, how to use spells, how to set traps, how to set a monster in an attack or defense position. But besides that, I definitely feel like a pro. But it was kind of a laugh, and I mean, like, I sort of had a good time watching it, although I really just don't think there was a point, and they could have at least, like, told people how some cards work at all. Anyway, let me down in the comments. Now that you've seen this amazing Yu-Gi-Oh tutorial, are you you prepared to become a professional Yu-Gi-Oh player? I know I am. All right, it's gonna be it. Fast turn.